Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial examinations. This is a practice problem for exam P on probability. Uh, you have some information about me uh, and the actuarial program at Illinois State University that I run, as well as some contact information. Mm, please let me know if you have questions about these exercises. Uh, and. Uh, if you need to find me, you can find me using this redirect service that I use, smarturl.it, by going to smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. This is an exercise posted by a Society of Actuaries among their sample um, exam questions. Uh, for exam P, this is problem number 163, and it will be posted as a video in my YouTube channel under this smart URL, uh, p-june12-2017. A student takes a multiple choice test with 40 questions. The probability that the student answers a given question correctly is 0.5, independent of all other questions. The probability that the student answers more than n questions correctly is greater than 0.10, the probability that the student answers more than n plus 1 questions correctly is less than 0.10. Calculate n using a normal approximation with the continuity correction. Please note that this capital N that is used in the problem is not a random variable. It's a specific value of this random variable for which um, you go from probability being more than 0.1 to less than 0.1. So um, you need to be careful not to think about it as a random variable. The random variable that we're analyzing here is the random number of correctly answered questions. And since for every question there is this 50 0.50 probability of answering correctly, and there are n equal to 40 questions, n is a binomial random variable, so it's 40 repeated Bernoulli trials with each Bernoulli trial having a probability of success of 0.5, and you counting the number of successes in those 40 attempts, 40 Bernoulli trials. So n is binomial, or you can think about it as a sum of 40 independent, identically distributed binomial, uh, binary tiles creating a binomial uh, random variable. The expected value of uh, binomial random variable with parameters n and p is n times p, so in this case it's 40 times 0.5 or 20, and variance is n times p times 1 minus p, which we often denote by q, the probability of failure. Pro p is probability of success, um, 1 minus p or q is probability of failure, and in this case that's 40 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, which is 10. And now we look at that information that is given to us, that probability that x is more than n is greater than 0.1, and the probability that x is more than n plus 1 is less than 0.1. And there is a strong suggestion of what method we're going to use to approximate this probability. We're going to approximate the probability with normal distribution. So we're going to be using the central limit theorem, but we're approximating a discrete random variable with continuous distribution, the normal distribution is continuous. <coughs> and a very important consideration is that when you're approximating a discrete random variable, the continuous random variable, well, there's this discrepancy between the two, and we make the continuity correction for it. But when we begin the approximation, the most important rule is what I call the fake ID rule. Uh, you're approximating one distribution with another one, so you replacing the real distribution with a fake distribution. The fake one is the normal distribution here. But just like in a fake ID, 
you need to have a real picture of the person who wants to use the fake ID. You can't have a fake picture. ID may be fake, but the picture has to be real. In this case, if you're approximating an, uh, the binomial distribution and a normal distribution, it is fake, but you're going to um, have to make sure that it has the same mean and variance as the thing that it is approximating. Well, we just figured out the mean and variance, so we're just going to use that. That's okay. Um, and the continuity correction. So the probability that x is more than n, that's the first one we're approximating. We appro because of the, uh, the x originally being discrete, being more than n really means being n plus 1 or n plus 2 and so on. And the continuous distribution goes smoothly between n and n plus 1. So we take the continuous distribution starting at n plus 1 half. That's what the continuity correction means in this case. And uh, so we're saying that property at x is more than n is the same as property at x is greater than or equal to n plus 1 half. For the discrete distribution, it makes no difference because there's nothing between n and n plus 1. So this is equal exactly, but the continuity correction is in now using the uh, continuous normal distribution uh, from now on instead of x. So we actually subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, and we're going to say that this x minus e of x divided by the square root of variance of x, of standard deviation, that this random variable is, it's approximately normal, but we're going to say from now on we'll pretend that it's normal, and because it's standardized, we uh, we subtracted the mean divided by the standard deviation, has a mean of zero, uh, standard deviation of one, so it is standard normal. And on the right hand side, we subtract the same mean divided by the same standard deviation. Uh, but um, the mean is 10, um, and uh, no, the mean is 20, I'm so sorry. The mean is 20, and the standard deviation is the square root of 10, or variance is 10. So when we have minus 20 and plus 1 half, we end up with uh, n minus 19.5 here. And because we say that x minus e of x divided by the square root of variance of x is standard normal, this has to be equal to 1 minus phi of n minus 19.5 over square root of 10, where phi is the cumulative distribution function of standard normal distribution. So phi is the probability that standard normal is less than n minus 19.5 over square root of 10. Of course, 1 minus that is probability of being more than this number. And we are told that this is more than 0.1. And we do the same for probability at x being m more than n plus 1. Again, we say that we're going to switch to x being greater than or equal to n plus 1 plus 1 half. And plug in e of x to be 20, so minus 20 plus 1.5, that leaves us with negative 18.5, or n minus 18.5, divided by the square root of 10, on the left hand side, x minus e of x divided by square, uh, square root of variance that standardized this random variable, but we say it's approximately normal, so it's standard normal. Notice that um, I switched between greater than or equal to to just greater than, just like that. I did that because we now working with a continuous distribution, and for a continuous distribution, hitting one point has probability of zero, so it doesn't really matter. I didn't do that before, but still it ends up being that uh, I'm noticing this because it's important that that's this crucial difference between discrete and continuous distribution. For continuous distribution, probability of hitting one specific point is zero. So this ends up being 1 minus phi of n minus 18.5 over square root of 10, and this is less than 0.1. Again, phi is the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution. 
Okay, so this is what we just got effectively by pulling out the, this last inequality and adjusting for just leaving a phi of what we're working with. Phi of n minus 19.5 of square root of 10 is less than 0 0.9 and phi of n minus 18.5 of square root of 10 is more than 0 0.9. And now we just apply the inverse function of phi. Phi is uh, an increasing function. It's the CDF of the standard normal distribution. So we can just apply its inverse which simply amounts to finding uh, the um, z value corresponding to 0 0.9 and that's 1.2816 you now have on on the exam this normal uh, random variable calculator that you would use for this so you can look it up in the table and um, so what we conclude that uh, we have two inequalities n minus um, is that we have two inequalities uh, n minus 19.5 or square root of 10 is less than 1.2816 and n minus 18.5 over square root of 10 is more than 1.2816. And um, that means that from the first inequality, n is less than 19.5 plus 1.2816 times square root of 10. And that's approximately 23.55 and so on it's roughly 23.55. That's the crucial thing about it. And then the other inequality says that n is more than 18.5 plus 1.2816 times square root of 10 or approximately 22.55. But n must be an integer so we clearly see that n is 23. So that solves this problem. Please remember that this is copyrighted material and that uh, problems uh, from Society of Actuaries are copyrighted by them. Um, the solution is mine, but uh, the problems belong, belong to them and uh, reproduced with permission. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the exam.